Uh, Omar, thanks so much for your time. Right, uh, many of the foreign investors we're speaking with at the African Investment uh, Forum are long in Africa. What's Canada's position? Well, first of all, it's a pleasure to be with you. And, um, you know, I want to start off by saying Canada is a trading nation. A uh, significant portion of our economic growth is driven uh, by trade. Uh, one out of six Canadian jobs depend on trade. Um, our government came into office uh, with a, a promise and emphasis on increasing trade. Today, Canada is the only G7 country that has a free trade agreement with the other G7 nations. Mm. We just celebrated the first year anniversary of CETA, which is a free trade agreement with the European Union. We just ratified CPTPP, mm -hmm. which is a trans-Pacific uh, partnership. Uh, we just signed a deal with uh, our neighbors to the south and the Mexican, our Mexican partners mm -hmm. for NAFTA 2.0, now we call it USMCA. So this is just to give you a set of context uh, for how uh, committed Canada is to free trade, to international rules-based order. And we believe Africa is a, is a priority region. Uh, the potential for Canada and Canadian businesses and Canadian jobs in Africa are tremendous. And my presence here is to solidify uh, that commitment is to build on what we have been doing up to date and and to uh, learn and to uh, build relationships and, and continue to increase our uh, trade interactions with Africa. Omar, you speak about uh, NAFTA 2.0, as <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was called. Those were some worrying times there. There was a bit mm -hmm. of back and forth about the trade conditions between the three countries. Has that further amplified Canada's need to diversify its investments, and what sectors will you be looking at in Africa? Look, uh, you know, the, uh, that in Africa is well aware, uh, they are well aware, and you were speaking earlier about mm -hmm. the African trade uh, agreement, you were how difficult these mm -hmm. trade negotiations mm -hmm. can be. Uh, each country wants to get the best deal for its country, but we all know that trade deals uh, are never just a zero-sum game. Mm -hmm. It's meant to increase the pie for everyone. Um, uh, so we're, we're very glad that we were able to reach an agreement that not only sustained what we had with the United States and Mexico, but built upon it. But you're right, uh, you know, 75% of Canadian trade is with our neighbors to the south. Mm -hmm. And that is mostly because of convenience, proximity, a lot of uh, similarities in regulation, et cetera. But we truly believe that while maintaining that important relationship, we need to diversify. We need to uh, open up new markets for our businesses, for our workers. We need to, uh, we have a, a lot of expertise that the world can benefit from and we can also learn from the rest of the world. So absolutely. I mean, can you give us uh, an experience or some of the experiences of uh, the Canadian companies that are already on the ground here in Africa? I'm sure you interact with them within the portfolio of, of trade and the like. I mean, what, what are, what are their, their concerns or what, 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 what is their experience of doing business on the continent? Uh, prior to this, uh, to this uh, uh, interview, I just held a round table with about 20 Canadian businesses who are here at the investment forum. Uh, so uh, there is a significant Canadian interest and presence in Africa. And you mentioned uh, the sectors, there's natural resources, mining, uh, energy, uh, infrastructure, financing. And, you know, the, the concerns are similar to the concerns that we, are, we heard today uh, at the conference and yesterday. It's, uh, uh, there's a, first let me start off by saying there's a strong belief in the potential and, and a commitment to, to the continent. Mm -hmm. There's a consensus that the potential here is great, that the need is great, and that we can play a positive role. Of course, there are concerns about consistencies of regulations, about long-term certainty, uh, about uh, the even Canadian presence uh, because of the geographic difference bet uh, between Canada and, and Africa. Those are all uh, understandable concerns and they're surmountable and they're, we're dealing with them on a regular basis. We have a strong team of trade commissioners mm -hmm. in Africa and around the world that are supporting our Canadian businesses, building those relationships f with, for them. So those concerns are not, any, uh, not unusual for doing trade in anywhere where in the world and uh, we feel very optimistic about the potential and the prospect of increasing our business presence in Africa. But of course, there's a bigger umbrella there uh, that you are part of as the G20. 
Tell us a little more about what we expect the G20 compact with Africa to actually yield. What are the tangible results we are expecting from this? This is a great initiative that was started by Germany last year. Mm -hmm. uh, we're uh, delighted to take part in it. We're greatly supportive of it. Uh, we already, within that compact, we already have a deal with mm -hmm. Ghana where we are working on increasing capacity for uh, resources. Uh, our prime minister held a session at the United Nations General Assembly just uh, two months ago with the presidents of Rwanda and Ghana about call, uh, calling out for investment in Africa with focus on youth employment. So there's been significant outcomes of uh, those conversations, but we think they can be deepened more. We think they can be built upon more. Uh, one other thing as well, we just signed an MOU yesterday here. We have a new financial institution called uh, FINDEV. Uh, it is intended to, it was actually an outcome of much of the feedback we got from many of the businesses for need for innovative uh, financing, uh, financing tools that uh, blends in private sector and public sector. We signed an, uh, an MOU yesterday, FINDEV, with the African uh, Development Bank on creating a framework for uh, uh, working together on investment for in African business to create jobs with focus on empowering women and combating climate change. And then what's the budget there? I imagine that some <laughs> monies have been set aside to achieve the objectives you have just stated. Okay, so I can tell you overall, our Minister of Finance earlier this year announced a, a, bud a total budget of almost $2 billion mm -hmm. For innovative finance, uh, financial financial instruments, mm -hmm. for FINDEV alone, uh, its budget is 300 million dollars, and then there are other tools as well. And FINDEV, uh, one of its first if, uh, transactions, if not, I think it's the first transaction in Africa, was with a Kenyan Kenyan company mm. that is providing renewable energy mm. uh, to 600,000 um, uh, users who are off the grid. So not only are, are they providing power to them, but they're providing renewable power to them. And as we know, you need power, you need electricity mm -hmm. to, to develop, to grow the economy, and to do homework, to do basic tasks that any uh, individual expects to do. Omar, I'm going to close off on this question, and I don't know if you can mm. confirm it or not, but I understand uh, ever since Canada's um, legislation with regards to cannabis, that some Canadian companies have been looking as far as Lesotho in terms of getting agricultural land to actually work it. I don't know how much of this is true, but do you see those kind of synergies coming to the fore? Look, uh, uh, let me say that the intent for uh, legalizing and strictly regulating mm -hmm. cannabis was uh, not necessarily driven by a business uh, motivation. It was driven by a social pol a public policy objective. We um, recognized that uh, current uh, policies were not working. The policies of prohibition did not work. Mm -hmm. um, we have the highest rate of consumption among our youth. Uh, we created, left a market for um, uh, organized crime that was using it to generate a lot of money. So we, uh, our prime minister campaigned on it uh, in the last election, saying that we need to try something new. Mm -hmm. We need to regulate it and strict, uh, we need to legalize it and strictly regulate it so adults can have access to mm -hmm. it. But we need to make sure that our young people are, n are not able to access it and that uh, organized crime is not using it to generate uh, uh, sources of, of, of revenue. Now, I understand that uh, people are seeing it as a, as a business opportunity, uh, but it's not meant for trade purposes. In fact, it's mm -hmm. illegal mm -hmm. under international uh, rules to, to, to export and import cannabis. So uh, I'm not sure where that's going to mm -hmm. go, but I can tell you uh, it is not, uh, it's done for our public mm -hmm. policy good and we believe that is the right approach.